We've made our negative or have laid it on film. We and we processed it, we've run it through the washout, and now we have a dry plate that's ready to take to press. You have still the backing. Then you have, let me just make a simple image here. So you have the backing. You have the, you could call that the caliber, of the plate, overall plate thickness, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, you have this part of it, the overall thickness or the caliber. Then you have this part here. We call this part here the floor of the plate. And so when we say floor thickness, we're talking about this portion here. And then we have the difference between the overall thickness and the floor thickness, which is our relief. And then this surface part here is the image area. And then this part right here at the angle is the shoulder. Shoulder. All right? Got that right. Now, when the plate is exposed to light, you have an exposure to the back of the plate. So let's just say, ignoring the orientation, because often it's from the top down, let's say this plate was flipped up, flipped the upside down. But we are now exposing this plate to light. Uh, and this plate is not processed yet, looking like this. So it's continuous at this point. We, we, we light through the bottom of the plate. I did that, and for the working again. <clears throat> the light uh, travels through that back exposure. Now, one of the things it does is it kind of prepares the plate for the front exposure by removing a lot of the oxygen that is in there, okay? So it removes the oxygen throughout the polymer, allowing polymerization, because as I said earlier, the presence of oxygen inhibits uh, uh, polymerization. So that light ex uh, polymerizes, okay? But time is a factor, not just intensity. So we have a given intensity and as time goes by, we are now exposing more and more of that floor, making it higher and higher. So we can control the height of the floor thickness by the intensity and the amount of time that that, light, that plate is exposed. So one of the things we do is we measure floor height. And again, as your lab, if you leave the time constant, time constant, but your lamp is diminishing, it's possible that your floor thickness will decrease. So one indirect way of keeping your bulbs in check might be by your logging the thickness of that floor over time. If you see the trend of that floor getting thinner and thinner, it could correlate to your light intensity getting weaker and weaker. So once we've done that, and we've polymerized up to this point, if we were now to wash out in the washout unit the surface of this plate, we would not have that raised image because we have not done any exposing here. We would just have the a floor height all the way across. So now we need to do the front or main exposure. So if you have a system that has just one bank of lights, you would then flip the plate over and you now expose it through the negative. And similar to, uh, to the fact that time was a factor in how high that went, Time is a factor in how low that image area goes. And we can actually not image it enough, and then just fly away. In fact, that happens with dots. And when we're exposing dots 
through the top. One of the things we do is we look at the shoulders of those dots, we invest, we look at them and make sure that they look the way we want them to do it. Because what ha can happen is, let's say the dot should look like this. But we don't expose it to enough, quite enough time. And let's say it stayed on the plate, it could end up looking like this. where it's kind of undermined because it's been exposed, 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 and then we didn't quite do it enough to keep that shoulder going, and you can actually see where it undercuts here. Or the angle is different, or something happens. It's a, we create an undesirable condition if we do not give it enough uh, time, not just intensity. We want to do that front, that top exposure, the main exposure, as close as possible in time to when we've done that, and I don't mean like run to it, but don't expose the back and then set the plate aside and go have lunch and then come back and expose the front. You want to keep the flow going because uh, things can happen to the floor over time. You want to lock it in as soon as possible. Okay? So the, the main exposure creates the printing image. You can have single bank lamps, which means um, you have an exposure unit where you're putting the plate in there and you just have one bank of lights that come down. When I supervised an envelope operation in Florida, we actually had liquid photopolymer plates. And if anybody here remembers those, they could be a night. And instead of having uh, a nice solid photopolymer film, we would actually lay down a, a, a mylar sheet on, uh, on a glass table, a glass top of this exposure unit, and we put some bearer bars, two pieces of steel of a given thickness, prescribed thickness, and then we pour liquid photopolymer like molasses in on top of the that mylar where we wanted to create a plate. Then we put a film on top of that, and we actually use a steel roller to level off that liquid photopolymer, and then we put the negative on that and expose it. And the reason that, in that case, we had a two bank system, one underneath and one above, because we couldn't flip that thing around. So we had to expose the bottom, then we expose the top while it's sitting there, and we ended up with a photopolymer he uh, heading. Uh, point source. Another one is instead of this is your hood that has a bank of lamps like that, UV lamps that are shining down onto the surface of your plate. With a point source, you have one source of light and a special reflector that is bouncing the light off and the, the, the UV light is coming down onto the plate. Just worth a mention, it's really not that important, but the bottom line is if you've got light to expose your, your plate with, be it dual, single, or point source. Then inline LED. This one I'm not so sure about. Perhaps our friend from Hesco can, can shed light on this, but my understanding is that with those digital, the, the Esco digital machine, there is some LED going, uh, UV line going on in there doing something. And I'm not sure exactly what that is. Can somebody tell me what that is? You know, it's the one right there. So you don't have to take the photo for out of that. So what I must see is one chance of not reading is very less. But it doesn't do the back exposure, just the main exposure? Okay. So when you have on a digital an ESCO digital device, and instead of the plate being sit on the flat like this, it's on a drum. You have the plate clamped onto that drum. You have the, the mask on the outside. A laser is ablating that mask, and simultaneously, LED is exposing it, creating, creating that main exposure we were talking about. And then they take that <coughs> to an exposure unit, 
flip the plate and expose the back, doing the opposite. Instead of making the main image meet the floor, now we're going to make the floor meet the main image. Did I describe that okay? <coughs> Ah, perfect. Okay, so very similar to the process I described before, but instead of what I just said about exposing the top first, we're going to expose the back, and then when we ablate the film and expose it to LED, we simultaneously bring the image down to the floor. Better? Thank you. Much better than offline. Part of the print is very good. What are you doing tonight? Okay. Makes sense. Yes. Makes sense. So, digital is pretty cool. Do you use cool here in this country? Cool. <laughs> Besides, Guru cool. <laughs> okay, so now, now we've exposed parts of this sheet of photopolymer to light and harden that. You don't see it yet. It still looks similar. It looks the same. You have this continuous sheet. But what happens is the portions of that plate that have not been exposed to light, we wash that away by various means. There is a method where, just like this, instead of having LED or something, perhaps this drum is sitting in a bath of solution. And down here you have a rotary brush that's rotating. And that plate is going around the drum and that rota rotary brush is rubbing against that plate and it's gradually, with every pass, removing polymer that has not been exposed until it is removed virtually all of the polymer. Okay? There's uh, an inline one where the plate sits on and it just goes in a line and a brush rotates against it and removes polymer. There's also an oscillating platen where you set the plate where there's a, a tank, I'll have to just describe it by hand, there's a tank, a tank, no, I will do it right. So now we have a tank like this. It's got brushes. No, not there, sorry. Yeah, brushes down here. And this is a clamshell with a man where they are magnetic or a sticky base here and then the base the plate gets attached to that and now when you close this this is sitting in solution the plate comes into that and this this brushes are rotating or oscillating against it and it's removed so bottom line is what we do is we brush away the unexposed uh, polymer and it may be in the presence of a water or it may be in the presence of solvent because there are water wash plates and solvent wash plates. Then there's wicking, where we've done all that processing, and instead of it being brushed off, the plate maybe it's attached to a drum. And we have a roller here. The orientation does not matter. That roller could be here, here, here. But we have a roller, and we have a felt material that is, so we have the plate is rotating against this here. This, this felt is like a non-woven fabric, so it's not woven like on a loom, but it's just fibers that are laid together, special fibers. This mat here is going against the surface of the plate, and there, there's heat and pressure involved. And which each with each rotation, is going deeper and deeper as <coughs> the unexposed material is being wicked away by this mat. So as this turns, one of these reels is actually covered with unprocessed polymer. And it's taking it out, and now we've taken out uh, the unexposed photopolymer without liquids, without brushes, and that sort of thing. 